Hi. I'm going to call the Monday, July 17th, 2023, regular meeting of the Bossable Community Preservation Committee to order. And I'll call the roll. Deb Converse? Here. Catherine Garofoli? Here. Tom Lee? Here. Farley Lewis? Here. Stephen Robuchard? Here. Lindsay Council is present. Please note that tonight's meeting is recorded and broadcast on Channel 18 and in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20. The Chair must inquire whether anyone is taping this meeting and to please make their presence known. Seeing none, we'll go on to the regular agenda. The first item is the minutes. Approval of the Draft Community Preservation Committee regular meeting minutes from June 26, 2023. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Great job on the uh, motions as always, Ellen, and uh, with your uh, partner, Marilyn Fifield, who couldn't be here tonight. I think they've done a great job. We're caught up in all our minutes, and I think that's a great thing. Any discussion or questions? No, Seeing I just, none? I just have to abstain, remember. I wasn't right. here. And the minutes were very helpful by the way. I'll uh, call the roll. Deb is abstaining from the minutes. Catherine Garofoli? Yes. Tom Lee? Yes. Farley Lewis? Yes. Steve Robichaud? Yes. And Lindsay Council votes yes. Applications for tonight. An application is received from the Bonsville Land Trust requesting $905,000 in community preservation unreserved funds for acquisition of a conservation restriction on lots three and four, totaling 5.5 acres, and is a portion of 150 Wheeler Road, Marston's Mills, fronting on Middle Pond. An application for a Massachusetts land grant for $480,000 has been submitted by the Town of Barnstable and will reimburse the Community Preservation Fund if granted. The entire project cost for purchase of four lots, totaling 9.5 acres, by BLT is $1,825,000 with a conservation partnership grant of $175,000 applied for by BLT to fund acquisition of lot one. Lot two will be acquired through funds raised by private foundations and donors. And with us here tonight is Janet Milkman to discuss the project. Janet. Good evening. I'm Janet Milkman, the executive director of the Barnstable Land Trust. Um, I'm here to talk about this project, which we brought to you a few weeks ago with a letter of intent. Uh, we're really excited about this project and really grateful for the support um, in short, in a really short turnaround time from the Conservation Commission and the um, Open Space Committee um, uh, who let us come before them and, uh, uh, and supported this project already. Um, so Barnstable Land Trust has an agreement to purchase the Wheeler family's nine and a half acre pond front parcels um, on Wheeler Road and Marston's Mills. Um, I'll show you a few maps that locate it. Um, and I think I'm going to um, move pretty quickly to, to show you which piece we're actually talking about requesting funding from. So the total project is 9.5 acres. Um, the, the portion uh, lots, let's see, um, uh, three and four, we are requesting the CPC funding. That is the portion outlined in red here. And then the portion to the west of that, lots one and two, um, would be funded with other funding. So um, it's located... Um, Here's a, here's a close-up of that. So you can see um, we divided it up into four lots because of state funding requirements, or three lots, rather. Um, so the state funds can't be used to purchase the lot that has a house on it, but um, they can be used for the other two um, parcels there. So... Um, you can see here that the project is adjacent to the 22-acre Fuller Farm, 
which Barnstable Land Trust owns and purchased in um, 2012. Um, it uh, provides um, the option for uh, an extension of the walking trail that already exists on Fuller Farm to go all the way through um, to the uh, pond front on Middle Pond through the Wheeler property. Um, the uh, proposal is to um, grant a conservation restriction to the town on the eastern five and a half acres. Um, that's in return for the, the CPA funding. And um, that would also guarantee public access on the trail. Barnstable Land Trust would manage the property for conservation and passive recreation. And we, our intent would be to keep the small 1939 Cape Cod style house that's on there and use it as a caretaker home for the property and or to house Barnstable Land Trust staff. Um, the project is consistent with many of the um, criteria for CPC projects. I'm going to go through this really quickly since the air conditioning just died. <laughs> Um, but I'll tell you the timeline first. The project is scheduled to close in June of 2024. Um, we've worked with the town to apply for one state grant that would give half of, uh, reimburse half of the CPC funding and the other state grant that would provide $175,000 for Barnstable Land Trust. And then we will um, begin private fundraising this summer for the remainder. We have drafted the conservation restriction, and um, that will be reviewed by the state and um, the town council, and I think you have a draft with you in your package as well. So it is consistent, the, the pro proposed project is consistent with the local comprehensive plan um, and with the goals of the final vision of the, the proposed local comprehensive plan. It's consistent with goals one, two and three of the open space and recreation plan. Um, it will save resources that would otherwise be threatened. Um, that is, it could be developed into uh, three additional lots, pond front lots, and with the associated septics leading to um, Middle Pond. It uh, has a very advantageous cost-benefit value in that it would leverage a Massachusetts land grant if awarded, um, a conservation partnership grant if awarded, and um, Barnstable Land Trust private fundraising. It also provides, um, it provides conservation, passive recreation, and historic preservation opportunities. Um, the um, the, the Wheeler family was uh, really well known for many years as a holly farming family. They um, grew many of the hollies um, on Cape Cod. Um, the Ashumet Holly property that Mass Audubon now owns in Falmouth is, was the original farm um, purchased by Wilfred Wheeler, who was the first Secretary of Agriculture in Massachusetts. And, um, there are many, many varieties of holly still on the, the property that we would um, maintain. Um, the three Indian ponds, including Middle Pond, are considered by the state um, as priority habitat for rare species, for the rare freshwater mussels that grow in the bottoms in a vascular plant. And the Wheeler property has almost 600 feet of shoreline on Middle Pond which is a spawning ground for Barnstable's most prolific anadromous fish, alewives and blueback herring, coming up from the Marston's Mills River. Um, the two pond front acres are included in the biomap core habitat, and the entire Wheeler property is considered aquatic core buffer land in the biomap critical natural landscape. So these are really important conservation values and also make it a competitive property for um, state grants. Um, I mentioned uh, the opportunities for passive recreation and environmental education. Um, let's see if I can 
I think I need Sarah's help to pull up the, um, the map with the trail on it, um, if she's listening. Um, oh, here we go. <laughs> she probably needs to know which one that is. I think it's the bottom one. Um, yeah, here we go. So it's a little bit hard to see, but the bottom um, in green outline is Fuller Farm, and you can see the yellow trail. The middle portion is, a, is the Wheeler property, and you can see a pink trail going through there. And then up on the left, um, the, the top sort of northwest is the Danforth property, which the town owns. So there's really important um, corridor um, opportunity here. Um, and uh, then sort of to the north of that off race lane, of course, is the airfield and then West Barnstable uh, conservation land. So it's a really um, wonderful opportunity to extend and connect um, existing conservation land. Um, the public access that we would plan would be at Fuller Farm. There would not be parking um, on the Wheeler property, but there would be public access um, and parking at Fuller Farm, and then the ability to walk on the trail all the way down, which is about maybe a half a mile down to the Wheeler property. And then there would also be um, access for the Wheeler neighborhood off Wheeler Road. Um, you have the budget there. Uh, we're asking for approximately half of the funding from CPC. Um, a half of that, we hope, would be reimbursed by state funding, um, and the total remaining to be raised by us is about $836,000. So I think I'll leave it there and um, see if there's any questions. Members, questions? None? Everyone clear? No. I was just going to. I, I had one question. Oh. So it shows a trail through there. That trail will be usable regardless of the connection to the um, um, Mystic Lake. Yeah, the potential remaining right. trail. Right. The right. Access will be there, but if we yes. can make that connection. Right. Gotcha. And, and will there be any more trails added, or would there only be the one? Well, because um, of the location of the house. It's a little bit difficult to have sort of a loop trail, but we can we can look into that. Mm -hmm. um, it does. It will have access to the pond and the beach down there. There's really a beautiful beach, and if um, Sarah wants to pull up a couple more pictures, um, the other two um, can. There's there's pictures of the holly, and also um, so that's the pond front right there, yeah. and. Um, um, I think the, the other one is, oh, that's just, so the, that's a view of the property from Fuller Farm. Yeah. So I guess I just, a quick question regarding trails. Is it, are they going to be walking paths or multiple use, just walking paths? Um, yeah, our intent is walking. Are you thinking? Um, you know, people like to mountain bike and... Horses. Roller skate. I don't know. You know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I think um, we can uh, certainly explore that. Um, thus far, we have not had, we've had some mountain bikers at Fuller Farm, okay. um, but not a lot. I think primarily we see the use as a walking trail. Mm -hmm. okay. Anyone else? Catherine, did you have something? I was just going to compliment you on all the detail. I, I love maps. I don't remember them, but I love them. <laughs> and it was very helpful to, to see the connection. So thank you. I, have a, I know that this property just came about really recently and quickly, and I can imagine like the land management potential of this is like pretty great. So do you have any sort of thoughts on if you would create, whether it's like a viewing platform close to the pond so that people can utilize it for fishing? Um, I think we would be open to that. Um, we do not have, um, let's see, 
We have a property on the other end of Middle Pond that has a dock on it. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that we see it as an opportunity for people to potentially um, come up in their boats, their kayaks, and picnic. Um, they could potentially fish there. It's a very popular fishing area. Yeah. Um, they could walk down from Fuller Farm and fish there, too. So um, I think that's how we see it being used. Thanks. Anyone else? Seeing none? I'll open it up to the public. Comments? Come on up, Chris. I appreciate, Chris Clark, I appreciate all the work that Barnesville Land Trust does with the, um, with these, these initiatives and uh, this presentation was made at the 40th anniversary of the Barnesville Land Trust. So um, yeah, it, was, it was a very um, um, welcoming addition to the suite of um, uh, parcels that BLT has. And I'm just putting in a um, plug for our town's GIS department. As soon as Deb mentioned the um, maps, the maps are, um, unless I'm mistaken, the maps that Barnesville Land Trust uses um, are generated by our town's GIS department. So kudos to them. Anyone else? Seeing none, what we'd be um, looking for is a motion to approve the $905,000 request contingent upon a, um, not contingent, but supported by a $480,000 land grant uh, request that will be reimbursed if and when we are awarded. So moved. Is there a second? second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion, questions? Seeing none, I'll call the roll. Deb Converse. Catherine Garofoli? Yes. Tom Lee? Yes. Farley Lewis? Yes. Stephen Robichaud? Yes. Lindsay Council votes yes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate your you. work on this and your presentation earlier. All right, that's it for applications. Moving forward, we did receive our uh, financial statement on the fund balances. You all have that in your packet. Yep. And that starts us off for this year. Um, and we do have the two projects that I mentioned earlier, the grant agreement process that we need to keep going on, and then any changes to the historic preservation process to firm that up um, and make that a little less confusing for applicants. So there's that. Any additional public comments? Seeing none. Nobody here. Um, <laughs> going to be tough. Any other general discussion from members on any items? Seeing none, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So, so moved. moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the roll. Deb Converse? Yes. Catherine Garofoli? Yes. Tom Lee? Yes. Farley Lewis? Yes. Stephen Robichaud? Yes. And Lindsay Council votes yes. Thank you very much. Uh, there's plenty of boot on the side.